him. One even used the head to boot the other on his chest, and they had their fist up. And I was trying to tell them, please, ah, this is not a place to fight, don't fight. They say, ah, Baba, they are greeting themselves. That's how they greet. I say, this is how you greet. They say, yes. They obviously knew I was a novice because they were greeting actually by boxing and booting each other. They were greeting. So it's a language that they understand that I'm considered an infidel in their midst. So faith too has a language that those of the faith walk understand. And when those who are not of the faith walk speak it, they know this is an infida. They say they are greeting. I say, you are greeting. They say, yes. Obviously, after the exchange, the guy now brought the keg. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> say, well, me. And then it's sold for him. I say, yeah. I just displayed ignorance. <laughs> In Genesis 35, I'll read from verse 16. Here, um, Jacob was traveling, coming back from his sojourn in Laban's house. And Genesis 35 from verse 16, and the journey from Bethel, there was but a little way to come to Ephra, and Rachel travailed, and she had had labor. It came to pass where she was in hard labor, the midwife said to her, Fear not, you have a son. It came to pass as her soul was departing, for she died. She called his name Benoni, meaning son of sorrow. The father did not reject it. He superimposed his own on it and said, He shall be called Benjamin, son of my right hand. That is how faith speaks. They don't reject it. They superimpose. I asked God, why can't I reject? He said, because rejection is not light. It will not dispel the darkness. So only light will dispel darkness. So to reject is not light. It's just a milder expression of darkness. In 1 Samuel 17, that's why they don't say, they say, this will happen, say, to fear, I reject it. That's the language of the novice. It's not the language of faith. When they speak negative to you, you superimpose yours on theirs. That's how it is done. In 1 Samuel 17, You know the story of David and Goliath. I read from verse 41 to verse 47. The Philistine, that's Goliath, came on, drew near to David. The man that bare the shield went before him. When the Philistines looked about, saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. The Philistines said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with staffs? The Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistines said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Now he's speaking negative to him. Then said David to the Philistine, He didn't say to Fiaka, I can't know. He said, you come to me with a sword and spear with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee, take thy head off from thee. I will give your carcass to the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the earth and the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth shall know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword or spear, but the battle is the Lord's. He will give you into our hand. And that's exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. 
a few instances, very few, where they say, no more of this. They don't stop there. They say, it shall be this. Very few. <clears throat> like when God visited Abraham, the word Abraham is not a curse. It means exalted father. Then God said, your name shall no more be Abraham, but Abraham. Just two instances like that you find in the Bible where they nullified what was said. But they nullified the one that was not a curse. The one that is a curse, they don't nullify, they superimpose directly. Just like that. But sometimes the law of first return is what we hold. Many times. So if you say, <coughs> I cancel it, that's what heaven will hold. They will hold the rest coming. They just hold that force that proceeds sometimes. So that's why they don't cancel. You just superimpose your own straight away. In John chapter 1, I just want us to learn this basic aspect. It's a very mild aspect of faith which we all encounter from time to time. But if you're not careful, one could miss it and it could cost one dearly as simple as it is. So in John chapter 1, I read from verse 35. At this time, John the Baptist had baptized Jesus. Again the next day, John stood and two of his disciples, looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, the whole, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following him, said, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, that is to say, interpreted master, where do you live? He said to them, Come and see. They came, saw where he dwelt, abode him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon, said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now, when Jesus beheld him, now, Abraham was nullified, but it was not a curse. His exalted father. Here, yeah, Jesus did not nullify Simon. Simon means shaking like a reed, unstable. That's a curse. And Jesus looked at him and beheld him. He said, you are Simon, son of Jonah. Henceforth you shall be called Cephas. So when it's a curse, they don't reject. They superimpose. When it's a blessing, then they can cancel and superimpose. It's the language that is written that is being expressed. And it will help you in your day-to-day -day living. Amen? Amen? And like I said in John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5, it says the word which is light shines in darkness. And I ask God, why don't we cancel? He said, once you speak the light, he said the darkness will repel. He said the cancellation will not repel the darkness. It will only deactivate the darkness but it will not repel the darkness. And the day it is reactivated, oh no, oh no, it's going to be, I don't want to say like hell again, because we've we'll just misinterpreted that hell. They say, you mean hell is just to speak like that? No, it's not to speak like that. So we superimpose, and you superimpose. Talk to your neighbor, say superimpose. superimpose. The, will the will of God in your life, in your life. to anyone Speaking contrary, it's not God's will in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, the Bible says the word is profitable for instruction, right? Amen. Work worthy of the Lord unto all, pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. I increase 
in the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. How many people believe that they are being fruitful in every good work? We have programs we run. It has become part and parcel of us, even our daily schedules, that we forget that fruitfulness is supposed to be the order of the day for the children of God. You just feel because I've done it yesterday and I must repeat it again. It's Monday, it's another working day. Tuesday, it must take that course Wednesday. And we keep going on and on like that, forgetting that we must be fruitful in every good work. From today, everything you do, be it a daily schedule, a monthly, a weekly, call it whatever, or yearly, it will be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, you will notice the difference. The world will notice the difference. What are we saying in essence? That enough of maintaining status quo, either in profit or in business, you will be fruitful, more fruitful, exceedingly fruitful in every good work. In the name of Jesus, I am strengthened with all might according to God's glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness meaning that your strength will no longer diminish you will not toil you exert energy in getting things done it makes you sad this time around the word of the lord according to these confessions we're taking from the book of colossians is saying that you and i will be strengthened with all might according to god's glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness in the name of jesus i give thanks unto the father always who has enabled me to share the inheritance that belongs to god's holy people who live in the light meaning I no longer live in darkness. Nothing that has got to do with me lives in darkness. In Jesus' mighty name, God has delivered me from the power of darkness and brought me into the kingdom of his dear son. Through his blood, God purchased my freedom and has forgiven me all my sins. Amen. Christ is the invisible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. He is supreme over the political activities of Nigeria. He is supreme over the wars and rumors of war is supreme over life and death in the name of jesus it is through christ jesus that all things were made in heaven and on earth visible and invisible thrones or dominions or principalities or powers everything has been created by him and for him. Jesus Christ has reconciled me back to God through his blood on the cross. It's a place to shout hallelujah. Through his death, Christ Jesus has presented me to the Father holy, blameless, and without a single fault. I continue in the faith, grounded and settled. I am not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which I have heard, of which I am a minister of God. I am a minister of God according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me to fulfill Christ in me the hope of glory I am rooted and built in Christ I am established 
in the faith as I have been taught with my heart overflowing with giving. I am complete in Christ who is the head of all principalities and power. I have been raised to a new life through the mighty power of God. I am quickened together with Christ with God having forgiven me all my sins. God has cancelled all the records and charges that worked against me in life. He took those records and charges and destroyed them at the cross. He disarmed the evil rulers and authorities and publicly disgrace them through the cross. I, a member of the body of Christ, firmly connected to the head, Jesus, through spiritual joints and muscles, and I grow through nourishment and strength of God. I seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. I have set my affection on things above and not only on this earth, for my life is hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah! I have put to death sinful attributes I have nothing to do with sexual sin, impurity, lust, shameful devices, and idolatry. I have put off anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty or filthy communication, even online. And you do thumbs up. You like those things. What you are saying is you are in agreement with those things. Seriously, online and physically, people should know you for who you are, which is somebody that stands for Christ. You shouldn't be known online contrary to who we say we are when we meet one on one. May the Lord help us and give us the grace to be such in the name of Jesus. I do not tell lies, but I put off the old man and all its wicked deeds. I have clothed myself with a brand new nature that is continually renewed in knowledge after the image of God. I have clothed myself with tender hearted mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. I forgive people. Even as Christ Jesus forgave me. Above all, I have clothed myself with love, which binds us all in perfect harmony. The peace of God rules in my heart, and I am always thankful. The word of Christ dwells in me richly, in all wisdom. I teach and counsel people in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in my heart to the Lord. Whatsoever I say or do, I do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. As a wife, I submit to my husband. As a husband, I love my wife, and I do not treat her harshly. As a child, I obey my parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. As a father, I do not provoke my children to anger. As a staff, I serve my boss with singleness of heart, fearing God. As a boss, I give to my staff what is just and fair, remembering 
that my boss is Jesus. I continue in prayer with a discerning mind and a thankful heart. I work in wisdom among non-Christians and make the best of every opportunity. My speech is always with grace, seasoned with salt, and I have the right answer for everyone. I stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So when start thinking of what you think makes you be inadequate, you remind yourself that according to the word of God, the book of Colossians, 412, I stand perfect. Leave yesterday alone. Today, you stand perfect. Repeat, I stand perfect. Today, tomorrow, all the days of my life, until Jesus appears, I stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. In the name of Jesus, I take it to the ministry which I have received from the Lord that I fulfill it. <laughs> Please pon down this. Pon down this. Pon down that. What it says and what it means to you in this time. I take it to the ministry which I have received from the Lord that I fulfill it. I doubt if there's anybody that doesn't have it. Maybe you haven't discovered your own. That's why you think there's superiority with those that have identified or discovered theirs. When you discover your own, you discover that you have enough work to do until the life ends. It's when one has not discovered this one ministry that you have time for some things. When you do discover your ministry, until Jesus comes, you will see that you have no space to breathe, except to deliberately create that. May the Lord help us as we have taken these confessions, and may we be doers of what we have confessed. And I'm sure the soft copy is available, so if you want to keep you know, chanting this every day, you can do it. And may the Lord help us. And I am hoping that very soon, we will have these confessions in audio as well that you can play it anywhere you may find yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. I'll, I'll be taking my Bible reading from the book of Matthew 25, 1 to 12, Bible of the Virgin. I know we're familiar with it, but I have to read it for perfect understanding. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like it unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the, the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open, us, open unto us. But the Lord answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Say, Watch therefore, for ye neither know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. We're still looking at moving forward. The last time I, I took something about moving forward, we looked at the main, one of the main criteria to move forward, and we said it's being in the will of God. Again, I gave an example of Adam. And Abraham. But yes, something struck me that these ten virgins were in the will of God. They set out to meet the Lord 
They set out on the journey to meet the Lord, which is the will of God. But on the way, five midis and five dimes. So on the way, some could continue, advance, move forward. Some did not move forward. And I found out that another major criteria for moving forward is your consecration. It's the oil, it's the consecration, it's the anointing, it's the grace. And it's the consecration that keeps the anointing. So I'm giving us a charge. You know your consecration. I know my consecration. Even for the fact that you're in the will of God, sometimes it is not enough. The children of Israel were in the will of God when they were advancing towards I. That's the will of God. But when Achan took of the accursed thing and brought desecration to the camp, they could no longer move forward, though they were advancing in the will of God. So, in as much as you are in the will of God, try as much as possible. Like the Bible says, out that you grant us peace by all means. By all means, keep your consecration. May the Lord bless the reading of His word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Church, please let's be on our feet this morning as we take the worship section. I am assured that if we look deep within us, we all have reasons to be thankful for. We all have reasons to say thank you, Jesus, for. So in regards to this, I want us to open our hearts and say something wonderful to God. Tell him how awesome he has been. Tell him how amazing he has been. Tell him how much he has kept you, how loving he has been, how patient he has been. We have a patient father. Tell him how patient. And thank him for that patience. Thank him for the love. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his kindness. Thank him for his care. Thank him for attention. Daily giving us attention. Attending to our needs on a daily basis. So you want to say, Father, I thank you. I am here before you this morning to appreciate you for who you are. Our King and our Maker.
Father, King of creation. 
Jesus said, is your father and his father, is your God and his God, the Almighty, is your father, is your God. Jesus, the son of the most high God, the conqueror of death and hell, is your brother. Maybe you need to let that just register. And the Holy Spirit is your friend. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I guess I don't have the right word. Please be seated to just say concerning this super magnificent being. Awesome awesome God, awesome, terrible, mighty, powerful. Wow. Amen. 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 I watched the man that dropped, he tried it in a space suit from the edge of space and he had a camera on him. It was 180,000 feet above sea level. No oxygen there, yeah, the oxygen, everything. So the camera showed the earth. And the entire earth was just seen like this, spinning. I said, so I am in one spot in that place that this man is seeing. Now the galaxy is vast. So I better not flip off because you're gone forever. You can't be taken again. So this is all this banana island. Dubai, pray. So they're all here. This place spinning. They were looking from 180,000 feet, which he sees from trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of quadrillions of trillions of feet above. And makes his foot too, just put his feet on it. Jesus Christ, my goodness. Ah. And I understand why doubting God is an unpardonable sin. God will help us. Amen. One of these days we have to look at the awesomeness of God from the eye of science. The awesomeness of God from the eye of science. And when science tells you he said the space dust is 6,000 years. They say the stars are trillions upon trillions upon trillions of stars. The tiniest star is 3,000 times the size of the Earth. The one burning at the lowest temperature is 15,000 degrees Celsius. The sun is burning at 3,000 degrees Celsius. The, the, the least star is burning at 15,000 degrees Celsius. What is this? Jesus. Ooh. Praise God. Want to pray? Start, first, we'll start with one of the Pauline prayers. And um, was praying for the Corinthian church that they come behind in no gift at all. In 1 Corinthians 12, it says, verse 7, the gifts of the Spirit are given for your profit. Then it says that it is given to everyone. So everyone has a gift of the Spirit. There are nine gifts of the Spirit. I was in a meeting on Tuesday, and a pastor we asked him to pray. He didn't really pray, he was just talking. And as he was talking, I could pick the gift of word of wisdom working. And the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom working. And it was working. I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus. That gift was operational. It gave me guidance into what is to come. And the church is suffering losses. Because these gifts are not in operation. And it says it is given to everyone. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 
Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. The question is, Paul said, neglect not the gift that is in thee. So first, you must know the gift in thee. Two, you must not neglect that gift. Three, he said, stir up the gift. You must stir it up. Four, you must seek to use it for the edification of the church and for divine profit. Otherwise, that person will incur God's wrath. So the first prayer point is, first and foremost, do you even know the gift you have? Because you have at least one. Some have six, some have five, some have all the nine. Do you know which one you have? What stirs it up? What atmosphere are you in that the gift is activated and it begins to work? What stirs it up? For Elisha, we know it's music. He said, give me ministry. As the music came, the gift was stirred up and it began to work. Some, it's prayer. Some, it's teaching. As they're teaching and sharing the word, the gift is activated. Do you know what gift you have? Do you know what activates it? Have you started using it for the edification of the church? And is God profiting from your gift? So the first prayer I want to pray is that your eyes will open to know the gift God has placed inside of you. He said everyone has a minimum of one. A minimum of one. That's what the Bible says. We're going to take three points together. Then as he reveals it and you know it, if you ask him, he will show it to you. I remember once I was in Port Harcourt, went to set up a church then, and I was praying Ephesians 1, 17, which is the prayer we're going to use for the three together, to know the gift, to stir it, to operate it, and bring profit to yourself, to the church, and to God. And as I was praying Ephesians 1 from verse 17, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will come upon me, that the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened, that I know what is the hope that he has kept inside of me, the exceeding greatness of his riches. And I began to pray it. I prayed for about three months because I was a bit, I had some time, we're going to set up a church. So I had some time, I was doing outreach in the morning and the evening. So most of the midday, I was free, so I was praying that prayer. About the thought, when Jesus appeared. He said, I've come to show you a gift you have that you don't know. He said, stretch your hands. said, at the tip of these fingers. He said, at your right and your left, these fingers. Then he told me what gift was in the fingers. Then he said, in the right palm, he told me what gift was in the right palm. Then in your left palm, he told me what gift was in my left palm. I never knew until I was praying that it would be a disaster to die. I said, you mean you had this gift and you didn't bring profit to my king? He will even wait for you to die. He will collect it and give it to the person that will deliver. He's not even going to wait for that person to die. That won't be your portion. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 16, Paul said, I cease not to give thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayers, so it's a prayer. It's not just fall down and die, fall down and die. No. That God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give unto you the spirit of... Can you take it? He said, when he prayed it, he said, Jesus appeared to him. No, he said, Jesus. He said, when he was praying, he said, one day, he felt like a coin dropped into the center of his head. Cow! He knew instantly. He had the gift of teaching and revelation. Immediately. Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of you, say after me, say, Father, Father, grant unto me this very moment the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. I want to know what is the hope of your calling, the riches of the glory of your inheritance that you have kept in me. The exceeding power that is inside of me and what I need to do to unleash that power. The same power 
that you used to raise Jesus from the dead. You've kept inside of me. I want to know what do I need to do to unleash the power and bless humanity in the name of Jesus. That power is dormant until those gifts are discovered. Then it's not enough. It's a Timothy. The, deep is, the gift is in you, but it's dormant. He said, I am persuaded that the gift which is in your mother, you your grandmother, is in you, but you're not using it. He says, stir it up. When you stir it up, power, Carlo, the same power, not the one that was used to create the earth. That's the power of God was used to create the earth. The super mighty working power was what you used to raise Jesus. It's not the same power. The one you used to raise Jesus is the power of powers. That's the one they say is inside of you, not the one they used to create the earth. The one they used to create the earth is small. Because when they raised Jesus from the dead, they raised him from man to God. God. They said the angels worship him. Because he could, you know, his man before he was raised. God can't go to hell. So he went to hell as man. When they raised him, they raised him back as God. The son of God. God, the son, the second member of the Trinity. So he used the mighty working power for that. He used his power to create the earth. He said he has deposited it inside of you. He said, but it will only come out when you discover the gift he has kept in you. How to operate it. When you operate it, say that power will be unleashed. Say after me again. Say, Heavenly Father. Father, What is the gift gift? you've kept inside of me? It's your riches of your glory. You kept it in me for your kingdom, for your sake, for the church. Open my eyes to see it. Open my heart to understand it and use it for your glory in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Kelimanga Lusa, Kayamando Lebeke, take a check it too. Aya Baba Baba Boro Bobo 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 Yeketi. Ole Mondo Lobozi, Candelibo. Ora Baba Baba Baya Catani. Ele Boko Zubre de Keketia. Ora Baba 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 Baya Catacha Cha Cha Cha. Uyandele Keti. Kuyanda likuza kataya mango luze kre made luzo krodosia kura kusa kanda luze kanda luze keteya kombo luza katata elisha lusha kayamondo kayamondo nitalusa katata eleke gege 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 uya gagagagagaga bogode ora baba 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 robokode robokonde malusa katata Kango lobo kose, kanga libo kose, kanga libo kosiya, kanga laba kacha kacha ka, kolobo kose de, kura katata. In Jesus' name we have prayed. There are no intense sky, man. Uh, you know what? The mantle of the latter days are greater than the former. But actually, the mantle of the latter days are a combination. Of the former and the later together. Mantles, anointings, anointings inside of you that needs to come out, that you need to know. Jesus. You have to pray to know them. When you pray, God will reveal them to you. In that scripture, he was showing me. 
He said, when you do this, do this. When you see this crisis, do this. Can you think he said, they told him, he said, there's anointings that for cancer in your hands, when someone is sick, he said, put your hands like this. If you feel fire move from what he said, it's a demon. If there's no fire, it's a medical. Pray normally and the person will be healed. It's been in him before he was born. But if he didn't pray that prayer, he would never know. We're still going to pray. I want you to know the dimensions of God that is inside of you, of grace that is inside of you. When you know it, God Almighty, when you know it, some will say, I know this man. When he prays for, if you remember, Philip went to Samaria and he prayed and he was ministering to people in Samaria. Who were the people healed in Samaria? Those who were crippled and who were possessed only. Philip didn't minister to the sick. He didn't minister to the disease. No. Only the crippled. Check it. In, is it Acts 8 or Acts 9? Philip was ministering. He said, and as many as were crippled were walking. Then I think deaf or so were hearing. Specific. The gifts of healing specific. It's been in him. The day you discover it, then it's not enough. You must know how to operate it. Once you know how to operate it, wow. Some of you have it in the financial industry. Being frustrated. And God says, come on, look in word. The answer is within you. It's the solution there. Say after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father open, my open my eyes to see your grace that you have kept inside of me that creation is waiting for. Teach me to use this grace to bring glory to your day, profit to your kingdom, and a blessing to humanity in the name of Jesus. Let me hear pray again. Break a loose up a catay mandi. O moku seke teke teke. O yamangali mugu zakata chacha moko chaka. Iyamakatala mangalibo. Mangalibo ko seke tete. E brendele boko zuna. Iyabakatura kasendi. E brendele keboko toya. O roboko tende, o roboko zikatia, makata kura kata ya makalebo, o roboko tolo boko ko roboko ko zeketete, e roboko suvro doko zeketete, iya mangali boko zeketia, aya bakata raba baba bari ya bakata tata, o robobo bobo bobo yoko lomode, o yolo boko zakatata. Iya kanga libo kozene kalimo kalimo koya makatata karibo kozekete kende lizuma kataya kande lishukuku ya kachakata we give you praise father in jesus name we pray Amen. i want to encourage you if it's 5 minutes pray ephesians 1:17 in your life every day they will open you to something you don't know. <laughs> and the day you know it, my goodness. Pray it every day. Say, open my understanding by the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And pray it. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Our next prayer point I found out there's barely anyone who does not have challenges, crises they are dealing with. It's either in the home, in the business, in their health, in every single area. I found out if you ask God for wisdom to deal with these things. I told you, for example, someone has a health issue and it's nagging and nagging and God can tell you, you know what? Just avoid this and do this and do this. And it, it, it's done. With that health challenge to be properly managed until the person has faith to root it out. And if the person has no faith, he can manage for the rest of his life. 
and live profitably and prosperously. That is what wisdom will do. I told you the Lord appeared to me said, cut down on this, cut down on this, and keep your weight under this. That is wisdom being learned for health. Now, some, the crisis is not health, it's finances. Some, the crisis is marital. It's barely anyone who does not have a crisis issue. When you ask God and he gives you wisdom, it will be solved. It will be resolved. So we want to ask God for wisdom. We can never be tired of asking God for wisdom. And pray that wisdom he will give to you will be like Aid Tofer, that you will be like an oracle, that a man will go to inquire from God. I was telling somebody, the solution to Russia and Ukraine, this is it, this is it. And they looked, they said, that's true. With this, everything will be solved. But you know what? The world leaders may not even know. Say after me, say, Heavenly Father, Father, grant me wisdom wisdom. that I may live. live. Pause. Whoever has no wisdom is not living, it's just existing. There's a difference between living and existing. Wisdom boasts by me king's reign. He, you live when you have wisdom. You exist when a man does not have wisdom. And a lot of people are just existing. Say, Heavenly Father, Father, grant me wisdom wisdom. that I may live. And every single crisis that is before me will be adequately resolved with profit both for God and for me in the name of Jesus. Grant me, according to your word, liberally. If I caused it, the crisis with my hand, then according to your word, do not upbraid me in the name of Jesus. Let me hear you pray. When you pray, say, let wisdom be unto me like the air I breathe. Let wisdom be unto me like oxygen. On a second per second, let God be granting you wisdom. Second per second. Malus kataya mangalibo. Brokoto koto koto kochalibo koko teke. Mondo lobo koze kalito, kaya manga limpo zeke. Ele mondo lobo kosi brakataya mande, orobo kosu brakataya, kia manga le, kia manga limbo kozere. Ebre kelusa, kai mando lobo koze, kacha cha cha, kacha cha 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 boko koko te. Olo bondo lo boko zkrede kusu brakataya mande. Eli bakataya mande. Koro boko zeketia. Mengali boko zekrede ketia. In Jesus name we pray. You know in the book of Ecclesiastes it talks about a strong nation that besieged a small city like we have Russia and Ukraine. And they say, a poor man by wisdom. Do you know all the Ukrainian president now need is wisdom from God? And Russia is doomed. It's finished. Father, grant Ukrainian president. What's his name? Zelensky or so. Whatever he is. I ask, Holy Father, I step into my office as a priest. And I come before you. You said I should come boldly. To your presence at the hour of need, I come boldly through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And I stand before you, having been cleansed by the blood of our Lord Jesus. And I stand on behalf of the president of Ukraine. And I'm asking you, Russia is depending on his military might. His military might is his God. And his military might he worships. Ukraine has nothing. And I ask you to intervene. Amen. For seven angels. Warring like Michael and his angels. To wage war against Russia. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Then grant the president of Ukraine wisdom. Amen. 
to know what to do at a crucial time like this and deliver Ukraine from the hands of the great terrorist himself, Russia, in the name of Jesus. Let it be known. Like David told Goliath, the Lord does not need bow and arrow. He said, the Lord God of Israel will say without these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, Russia is like the Chaldeans. They say their God is their army. They worship it. They believe with it. They can do anything in the entire world. At the United Nations, the ambassador of Ukraine to the UN says, Russia, you are like a demon, but we will believe in God. He said, we believe in God and we will pray. Of course, the Russian, to, Russian ambassador, I don't think this was believing in God. They believe in the army. They believe in the tanks and they believe in the missiles. They'll be disgraced, Amen. humiliated, Amen. and put to shame Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Next prayer point, say after me, say that my joy be full. That my joy no one takes from me. A joy will not be turned to sorrow. I don't know what it is you celebrated in January, December, you're happy, and something wants to turn. No, that's not going to happen. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That testimony is not going to be robbed of you. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You will testify. You will laugh. You will dance. Amen. You will rejoice. Amen. You will glorify God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Says that my joy be full. O oh God Almighty, oh God. make my joy full in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finish every good thing that has started in my life. Let it be completed with the shout of grace. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I have gone weeping. I have gone sowing. I decree I am returning. With my harvest. Rejoicing. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Maluzo brakataya mango lobozeke. Breke toko chakato. Eya moko loboko zeke teke teke teke. Eli baba ba ya katara baba baba bo robo baba baba yo koto o robo baba baba ya keri ya bakati ya kari baba baba robo baba koze o robo baba 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 ya kete keri ya kato lo mo lo baba koze keti ya o robo ndo lo baba koze kete 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 keri ya kato lo baba koko robo ndo lo baba koze e ra kata ta 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 baba koze. Oromondo lobo koko zia kataka. Kura kataka chako. Kangele moko zia. Kuya kataka cha. Tele mondo lobo koko zeke teke. Kira baba 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 boro boko kore ya kata. Ele mondo lobo koko zeke tusa. Kangele bakata ya mandi. Koro boko zeke dia. In Jesus name we pray. Finally, let's pray for Nigeria. Um, <laughs> America said in 2025, they'll stop using cars with gasoline to be purely electric cars only. China is planning, I think in the next three, four, five years, no more gasoline cars. Saudi Arabia has seen that oil is going to crash has bought over Mercedes-Benz and is investing heavily. They even want to sell Aramco, the largest oil company on earth, for about $750 billion. While our president is prospecting for oil in Chad Basin, still looking for oil. Let's pray for the next person that will leave Nigeria. If you look at antecedent, we can say, because in his military days, when he came, Nigeria was old. He cleared all the debts. He was clearing the debt. They were building. Why are you paying debt 
He paid the debt. Now he's borrowing. And he said he will continue to borrow. So in the true sense of we can't even look at antecedent again. Let's pray for the man that will move Nigeria for. Nigeria has been in reverse gear. If you know what the Emirates in Dubai are doing for their people, if you know what one of the visions of the Crown Prince is to make sure that Mecca and Medina is purely Islamic. They want to lift the Islamic in the other regions to encourage tourism. Everyone is thinking years ahead. Ah, Lord Jesus. I don't know whether it's the 2023 election. But if it's just that 2023 election and we need a political party, then we have a lot of work to do. And that's the prayer we actually pray. Because any other thing will not be too good for us. But God has his way. Let him have his way. But we need a leader who will move us forward. Let me be honest with you. We can't catch up with the West again. We can't. Say Singapore, no, we can't. And God has given us a hint of where we can shine to the nations of the world. Israel, Saudi Arabia makes money money from Islamic tourism that's visiting the Kaaba. Israel makes money from visiting the old historical sites. God has said we shall be known for what? Righteousness. Not for science. Let's not deceive ourselves. We will try our best but we can't catch up. Not in science, not in anything. But the earth can be still and the attention of the earth can turn to Nigeria on account of what? Righteousness. Why don't we concentrate on that? Why? That doesn't mean we won't have a good metro network, we'll have good water, we'll have electricity. <coughs> but the West has gone farther than that. You think we'll try and go to space? No. Space care. Plant corn so that we don't import corn. But the world can be looking for Nigeria's visa all over the world. I need to visit Nigeria here. That even if you bring your dead these three months, they will raise it up. Jesus. And the young government said, no, to enter you must have at least a thousand dollars. And people are, and we're making more money from righteous tourism than from oil and gas and every material you can think put together. Brazil made, we, Brazil made 13 billion dollars in a year for meat alone. Meat alone. Meat. Only meat. Only meat. Oil is not the alpha and omega. In some cases, it's like it curse itself. So I want us to pray. The leader that will bring that righteousness. Leave the debt. Kabo Shande Kato. Look, God can move. He's the one that orchestrated the crisis in Egypt. He's the one that brought the solution. God can, do you two know that one company can pay it off? The company is richer. Apple is richer than Nigeria now. He said, company is richer than Nigeria. You don't think so? Don't worry. That, go, that will be sorted out. Let's concentrate on the prophecy that he said by which he will make. He didn't say he will manifest us with oil. He said he will manifest us with what? Righteousness. Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's focus on it. That leader. And let me shock you. Is not the leader. Well, let me leave it. I don't know who the leader is. God knows. I will tell you who is not. But whoever that man is, let God be even platform now. Amen. The resources, Amen. the people, Amen. the funding, Amen. and the ability Amen. and the grace Amen. to mount the saddle next Amen. and pilot this nation Amen. towards righteousness. All the prophecy says that people will, just like people want to marry Americans to get American green card, people want to marry Nigerians because of that righteousness. They will say, we hear angels walk on your streets. 
Is it true? He said, yes, come, let me show you social media. Oh, goodness me. They will save up to come to Nigeria. Amen. What will make from tourism? No nation on the earth is the last move of God for Jesus to come. He has chosen Nigeria. These demons can't do it. They are just coming to chop. Lord, say after me, Lord, Lord. That, man that man that will lead Nigeria in the path of righteousness that will bring your name to be glorified in our nation that will cause the nations of the earth to fear God because of Nigeria. Bring him out, O oh God. Give him the right platform. Give him the right resources that at the adequate and the right time let him step into the saddle and let him lead Nigeria in that path of righteousness that you have ordained for us in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. So that means we're praying there will be a shocker for 2023. I don't know whether it's APC or PDP or the third force or which one. There's a shocker coming. Molu sekre de bokotondo lobokosia. Elemondo lobokosia. Elemondo lobokoseke. Makata ya bakata. Mangali bokolomondo lobokose. O lobokosi kata ya mande. Ele bokosu brodo kototo. Mangele baba baba baba. Olomondo loboko heya kata kata kata. Elemondo loboko seke tete tete. Kaya mamande. Kaya mamande. O robombondo loboko zia. O robondo loboko zeke te. E breve keke tele mande leboko zu. O robondo loboko ze. Nigeria will rise again. O rabaka suko chaka chaka. Mangali boko zeke. Uya kata ya manga le bokoto aya kaka 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 koya olo bobo bobo bo yokoto eke le boso natu zakayinde e brede ke toko roboko zia orobondo lo boko zeketia ikalimondo ikalimondo ikata ya bakata la bakate kolo boko sekrede ketia in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen I guess it's a song, right? The second hymn. All right.
Um, I want to say this in passing. You know, in Luke 18, it says, if the Son of Man comes again in glory, shall he find this kind of faith on the earth and use the widow and the unjust judge as an example. And he's talking about people not getting it at the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth attempt, but still stay at it and eventually get it. He said that the kinds of people I'm coming for. So it's possible in these last days that is not everything that will respond at the first command or the second command or the third, but it will respond. Did you hear me? It may not respond at the first, at the second. Lady, lady told me, said, I had 13 miscarriages, 13. She's somebody in information and knew, someone you all know. Say, I had 13 before I eventually had my three kids. At the 13th miscarriage, she didn't give up. Then she had the 14th estate, the 15th estate, and the 16th estate. He says, those are the kind of people and the kind of faith resilient that will never, ever give up. It's a Luke 18 faith, and it's a kind of faith that the Lord is looking out for at his second return. Amen. That's just, that's just by the side. Amen. I want us to sing this song very, it's almost like our anthem, but it's not our anthem. It says, Thy throne. When you sing it, stand, put your two hands on your head. Why? 
Oh, before you sing it, maybe I should say one or two things. That oil of gladness, they call it oil of joy. It was given as a promise. It's an oil, it's an oppression, it's an anointing. He says that Jesus was praying, said that they may be sanctified. A Roman said that you may be sanctified by the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit can enter your life. Some people will say, I'm not going to smoke again. Because they had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. He sanctified them and they stopped smoking. Some are sanctified by the word. They hear the word. They believe it. Faith rises in them. Faith knocks out that issue and they are sanctified. The same way, the oil of joy can be encountered by a step of faith to move forward. Can be encountered according to John 16 by prayers and it can be encountered by a leash of grace. He says, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. And the young man then began to say, what will happen? Now, I can minister to you the word and I can minister to you the word by special faith. Meaning, that whether you believe or not, so long as that gift sits on you, you will receive. And I can minister to you when, <coughs> excuse me, in John chapter 9, a man came to Jesus and said, if I had gone to the Mount of Transfiguration, when he returned, I guess I will soon end the service. Here. When he returned, Jesus met him and said, what's going on here? He said, I brought my son to your disciples. They couldn't cure him. He said, oh, faithless generation, bring him to me. Then he said, Lord, help me. He said, all things are possible if you can believe. He needed to believe. He said, Lord, I believe. Then he said, help my unbelief. They are not consistent. You know, when you tell somebody, I believe, and the person you are telling looks at you, and from the look of his face, you can see that he's looking at you that you don't believe. Then you change. You know, like mothers. They tell their children, they say, uh, they ask the children, do you want cake? Say, yes, auntie. Then the mom looks. Say, sorry, auntie, I don't want cake again. <laughs> there is no word going on. It's just look. From that look, you know you're goofed. You better change. I say, you don't. Say, why? And I say, no, I don't want cake. Because if you eat it, you're going to be caked from the look. So I guess, he said, Lord, I believe. From what he thinks he knew. But when he looked at Jesus' face, he said, no. Help my unbelief. Then his son was cured. Then he went to the pool of Bethsaida and said, met a man, 32 years in misery and sickness, and said, would that be made whole? Please, you and I, I let's reason together and tell me this is faith. Say, said, would that be made whole? This world is wicked. Say, wicked what? Do you believe? That I'm almost by the pool. Do that those people drag me back and get there before me. How can an angel heal them when he saw that I was the first to almost get there? Then they drag me because he can't walk. He said, wicked word. Is that faith? They call it complaining. He said, do all things without what? Murmuring and complaining. You enter God's presence complaining and they heal you. It's called grace. So the oil of joy can be grace. The atmosphere has changed. <laughs> Jesus. That's why I say you can be sanctified with the word. You can be sanctified by the spirit. Even Sarah was that faith. That ran and the Bible says by faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. Abraham's soul we know that was faith. Though a little older Ishmael believed that shouldn't have come in in that discussion. It says, die through. It's an anointing. It's an anointing. And it's falling. Do you hear me? 
it's falling. You know why sometimes it happens that way? God needs to move. And they've been waiting. And they say, if we wait for this man to believe, we're not going to get this job done. So I will sanctify you by my spirit. I will pour the oil of joy. I will pour it from above. It will, the Bible says, it will come on the head of Aaron to his beard and to his, it will flow from head to toe. His. If you want it, you need to rise. The Lord Kamun Sekete. Munzaka Naku Seketia. And hey, we can. Therefore, God, my God, has anointed me with the oil of gladness upon my faith. Therefore, God, my God, therefore, God, my God. As I know, me with the oil of gladness of my fellow. Let it fall, Kabun Sikabuta. Let it fall. Let it come. Let it rest on you. Let it rest. It's called the finisher's anointing. The finisher's anointing. Let it fall. Let it come. Let it rest. From the crown of your head down to the soles of your feet. The finisher's anointing. The oil of joy. The oil of gladness. Let it fall, oh God. Let it rest on you. Let it come on your head. Flow to your neck, to your skirt, to your garment. Let it envelop you round. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, Amen. you can have your seat. In Isaiah, is it 27? He says, In that day, which is this day, he says, The yoke shall be taken away, the burden from off thy shoulder, the yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of the anointing. What is this anointing? This anointing of joy. In Isaiah 61, he says that he has given me beauty for ashes. The oil of joy to counter any form of mourning. So it will shortchange and ground any form of sorrow. It will not come to place. It will. In John 16, say, ask that your joy may be full. It will answer to your heart cry and your heart desire. That's in John 16. It's a grace. It's an anointing. It's here. It's resting on you. It will prosper in you. It will flourish in you. It will abide with you. In the name of Jesus. Today, you will live here in Isaiah 55, 12. 
Since you got with joy, you're going to live here with joy. Amen. Bible says in Acts, is it 9, 10? I can't remember. No, 10 is Cornelius. 9 is Paul. I think it's 8. 8 is uh, Philip. I think so. And Philip went to the city of Samaria. <coughs> Excuse me. And there was great joy in the city. That city experienced great joy. Some of you, when you leave here today, you'll be glowing. Your face will light up. And people are asking, oops, you've changed. What's on your face? It's the oil of joy. Your face will light up like angels. You begin to glow. So in Isaiah 55, it says, you go out with joy, then you now be led forth with peace. In Psalm 35, it says, weeping may endure for the night, but what comes in the morning? Joy. So it means all form of weeping has come to an end and a close in your life in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 126, you remember the psalm? It says that um, when the Lord turned again our situation, we were a sieve. Hmm. We were a sieve, we were in a dream. It said, then our mouth was filled with singing and our tongue with rejoicing. How did he put it? Sorry. Hmm. There's a laughter. You said the tongue was filled with laughter, right? And our tongue with singing. And then, okay, our mouth was filled with laughter. I want to talk about laughter. It's also an anointing under the oil of joy. That's why Sarah said, God has made me laugh. We have come to a fruitful completion of this journey. Finally, we have gotten to where we have wanted to be all these years. Say, for God has made me to laugh. You know, in the seven operations of the Spirit of God, Spirit of wisdom, Spirit of power, Spirit of counsel, Spirit of understanding, Spirit of knowledge, Spirit of the, of the fear of the Lord, so each of them have subs under them, have subs under them. That's why you have a prudence. It's under the spirit of wisdom. You have power. You have, you have the anointing of the gifts of the power gifts under. You have counsel. You have sound mind. You have all of them working under those major spirits. So laughter is actually a manifestation of the operation of the spirit of joy. And why am I saying that? Because somebody is going to laugh today. Yeah. And it's coming in either of these four forms. Sarah said, God finally has made me to laugh. So what we have started since finally has come to a fruitful, prosperous, joyful completion. On that ground, somebody here will laugh this week in Jesus' name. Yeah. On the other ground, Psalm 126, when the Lord turned again our situation, we were like a if we were dream. Then our mouth was filled with what? Laughter. So it is, well, another manifestation of it is, after all these years, finally this thing has given way. We never thought this thing could be solved. So it is solved. It's either a deliverance or a power of God working to heal a long ailment. You've used medication upon medication upon medication. And you now try it and just find out, no, it's well, well. Why? You are going to laugh this week because that issue that has lingered. But this all of joy, it's a kingdom, it's a manifestation, a promise. 
is going to make that person laugh this week. Amen. And this long issue has dragged and dragged as dragged. I decree has come to an end in the name of Jesus. One reason, another reason somebody is going to laugh this week on account of this anointing is in Psalm, I think, 2 from verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, let us break the bands asunder and cast away their cause from us. He that sits in the heaven shall laugh. How is he going to laugh? Through you. Amen. Through you. Amen. Through you. Amen. It means the harassment, the satanic attack, the demonizing, be it in the family, wherever it may be, holding you back has come to an end. And I decree captivity has now become captive. So God held you back. You are now holding it back. In the name of Jesus. Finally, it says a broken heart dried the bones, but a merry heart, merry heart which is a laughter, do it good like medicine. Somebody's going to laugh because he's going to get healed. You're going to get healed. You just find that you use the medication and you're feeling funny. What's wrong? You go and say, doctor, I say, it's supposed to be for this, but you don't have this. Say, but I have this. No, it's not there. It's gone. It's gone. And gone. And gone. And it is working in your bones. It's working in your bone marrow. It's working in your muscles. It's working in your vessels. It's working in your cells. It's working in your tissues. It's working in your organs, your heart, your kidneys, your lungs, your liver, all the organs in your body. It's working in, in the entire system of your body, healing you and making you whole. This week from this very moment, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. Surprisingly, I'm done. It's done. It's like a force. I can still feel it here. It's like a force. It's working. It's working. And you know, like we said, it's a pouring of grace. The all of joy to cause laughter and they scan. So what's the problem of this one? Say, this one is health. Okay, we'll deal with it through laughter. This one is a longer way. It's been 12, 13, 4 kilo day. They deal with it, you make you laugh. This one has been demonic. They deal with it, they make you laugh. This one is the completion. They will deal with it, they will make you laugh. Either way, everyone will laugh. Everyone will dance. Everyone will rejoice. Amen. Just rise and let give to God thanks. I honestly didn't plan this one bit. I didn't plan this. I didn't plan this. We give you praise, Father. Give you praise. Kolo Sakandi. We give you praise. Lebo Kusakataya. Makaya no kote. Elibo kosia nakate. We give you praise, oh God. Mosum nakaide. Broko Sakataya Monday. We give you praise, oh God. Let this grace flow to as many as out there believing God to laugh in all the ways I mentioned. You will laugh, every one of you, wherever you may be. Kalu Sakande. Let this grace flow. Malu Sakatele Modu. Kushkataya de Kesele. Komola kusa kataya lika broko tene. Barabakanga luse. Aya kusa kataya monde. Molo bokoto, molo bokoto.
Ole boko to ya makali boko lo boko hiya. Ele boko se ngelish katu sakrade. Krande li zuvra kata. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give you praise. 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 I've not gone further. You know, Psalm 16 says, In thy presence is the fullness of joy. The right hand are pleasures forevermore. So it will bring pleasures. There's so many things. But it will address every pressing issue in your life. This week, this week, it's the kingdom. And, you know, Peter said, Lord, if it be you, if it be that kingdom truly, the ruler of our all kingdoms, every issue of Laughter we have mentioned will be adequately, thoroughly, totally addressed this week in the name of Jesus. Meaning, our next meeting you are coming with your testimonies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I was planning to teach, to preach. If you see the notebooks I sent back to the car, there were many, right? Those of you saw the, they were like this. I didn't do a teaching. But the Lord needs the testimonies from your mouth to encourage you, to let you know that your God and your Father has not gone to sleep. Neither has he traveled like the gods of Baal. He has never slumbered, so he is not even asleep. He has never, you know, slumber is like, uh, right? Sleep is to sleep. Slumber, you know slumber now, when you are struggling with sleep. He has never, ever, ever, trillions upon trillions of eternity. He has never even done like, never, never. And he doesn't announce it to say, I'm God. I've never slumbered. No, he doesn't do that. When he said, Moses said, tell them I am that time has come. He said, no, not much talk. That's not what I sent you. Throw the rod down. Eh, say, I am called. We don't talk stories in the divine, right? It's not story. That's what he's going to do. It's not a storytelling. You are the one that will come and tell the story of how good God is amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. If you believe, say amen. 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 I don't think if you believe it, say amen. amen. One more time, if you believe it, shout a big amen. 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 amen.